Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Great, so if you came here to learn about Tab's, Tab, Tableau's role in Brooks supply chain transformation, you're in the right spot. I'm Chase Mueller, and I'm the supply chain visibility manager at Brooks Running. So let's get started. You know that expression, Christmas came early? Well, what if it actually did? What if, without notice, Christmas was seven days early this year? How many people would be prepared? 15%, 10%, probably less. And what if over the next 10 years, Christmas continued to be unpredictable, falling anywhere between one and 15 days early? And only once did it fall on December 25th. What kind of behavior do you think that would drive? People would probably shop for presents earlier. People might not even travel because they don't know when to travel. And you know, what kind of an impact would that have? December 25th would become meaningless, just a placeholder on the calendar. And what kind of an impact do you think that would have on our global economy? Now, hold on to that example as we move through this presentation, and you'll see the parallel with the supply chain. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a story about supply chain transformation at Brooks and the role that Tableau is playing in it. To bring you along today, I'll try to keep the jargon and acronyms to a minimum, but instead plan to demonstrate how, as a business user, I'm leveraging Tableau to drive change at Brooks. I'll provide some background so you better understand Brooks, me, and the, and the use case that I'll be presenting today. And as we go through this, you'll see how my skills with Tableau evolved as I work to see the opportunity, pilot a solution, and manage the ongoing performance of an in-transit segment of the supply chain. And as a bonus, I'll share some real results, too. So first, we'll talk about Brooks. Uh, Brooks Running is a premium performance running brand. Uh, we've been part of the Berkshire Hathaway family since 2012, so it's pretty cool. Our CEO's boss is Warren Buffett. Um, although Brooks has been in footwear for over 100 years, it isn't until 2001 that we actually hit our stride. Uh, that is when the new CEO, Jim Weber, took the helm. He reset our product and sales channel strategy to focus on being the number one brand for runners. And in 2011, we reached that mark. We became the market share leader in specialty running in 2011, and we've held it for ever since. And there's only three companies that have had the honor of holding that, that spot. Nike was the first, ASICS was the second, and Brooks is the third. We have a global headquarters in Seattle, European headquarters in Amsterdam, and employees spread out all over the globe. We currently sell our product in over 63 countries uh, in the world, and probably a few others on the black market. <laughs> <laughs> our brand ethos is run happy, and we believe that a run can flat out change a day, a life, and the world. And we set out to do that with everything that we do at Brooks. We've been utilizing Tableau since 2015. And I wouldn't say that we've had the most cohesive rollout. There's been a lot of isolated use cases. And we haven't really effectively brought it together in one cohesive enterprise solution. And that's something that we're working on developing a roadmap for. Um, so about me. Uh, so first and foremost, I identify myself as a runner, uh, and I'm fortunate enough to marry my education and supply chain with Brooks Running. Um, I've actually been in the footwear industry since college, uh, originally working on the fulfillment side, then running retail, and then ultimately at Brooks as a production planner, which evolved into wearing several other hats along the way. And altogether, I've had over 19 years of experience in the footwear supply chain. As with everything, technology has become more and more a fabric of the supply chain. And the line between IT and supply chain is nearly non-existent. 
data, systems, and the ability to leverage them is essential for my role. And that is what led me to actually designing a new role of supply chain visibility. I'm fortunate enough to have the latitude to pursue innovative solutions to common business problems that can advance our supply chain outcomes. External to Brooks, I'm also the vice president of the Apex Puget, Puget Sound chapter, which is a supply chain professional organization focused on learning and networking. So you could kind of say I'm a modern day supply chain geek. Uh, I've been working with Tableau since we implemented at Brooks in 2015. I immediately recognized that Tableau could be an essential tool in helping me accomplish my supply chain visibility roadmap. Self-taught, I find it fairly intuitive to a point. And then it's not such a big issue when I get stuck. There's plenty of helpful resources online. We've got Tableau Community. They've got great resources that can help me get to where I want to be. So enough about me. Let's get on with what we're all here for and talk about the Brooks story of supply chain transformation. So the traditional focus has been on optimizing the customer side of the supply chain. We've invested a lot in our distribution center technology, our customer facing technologies, the web experience, et cetera. But we haven't focused much on the upstream supply chain. And this has come at a high cost, high inventory levels, time buffers, rework, and excessive communication, essentially wasting time. When our CEO, COO started two years ago, he shared my vision to daylight and optimize the upstream supply chain. And this is the focus of the supply chain visibility roadmap. From the time the goods are put away at the DC all the way back to the raw materials, all the way back to the raw materials, <laughs> uh, supply chains are notorious uh, for utilizing time buffers to, co to cover the common cause variation um, and, and the number of touch points and parties that are involved. The goal of the supply chain visibility roadmap is to achieve transparency through data integration and visualization to enable better control of lead times, informed decision making, and increase agility and speed. As I daylight the supply chain, I see Tableau as my top layer, the layer the company uses for visibility, for exceptions, for timely decision making, and tying disparate solutions together. This requires a digital transformation because the data is digital and the media to share it is too. And so more and more IT and supply chain merge. So the first transformation in the crosshairs is the in-transit segment of the supply chain. The in-transit segment is interesting. It's traditionally been one of the biggest blind spots in the supply chain, primarily because vessel operators are poor communicators, low tech, and a lot can happen at sea. In fact, ocean transit times can fluctuate plus or minus five days, and that's on a stated 18-day sailing. So that's more than a 20% error. The transit lead time in our ERP system is essentially buffered because of the poor reliability of the carriers in this segment of our supply chain. We typically don't know a vessel is late until the day before or the day of our estimated time of arrival. And that causes many challenges and waste in the downstream operations. And so therein lies the problem. So can anyone guess what the problem to solve is here? Trust. Adam, Adam spoke to it in the keynote this morning. Trust is at the basis of data. Leading with data is leading with facts, and that helps build trust. So how can people trust the date and the system to truly be the date that the product will be available for customers when it historically is unreliable? Think about the Christmas example. This has resulted in wasted time wasted money, wasted effort, and wasted opportunity. So what do you got to do when you have broken trust? Well, you got to rebuild trust. You got to demonstrate 
that people can trust the organization and trust this, this part of the process. So we have to ask the question, why is there a lack of trust? Are shoes available when they should be? Well, for that, we'd have to look at the plan date versus when, it actually, when they actually were. Are the vessel carriers reliable? Estimated time of arrival versus actual time of arrival. And can we manage the last mile from the port to the DC? So if we had a better idea of when the vessel would be here, could we then use an offset to manage the plan date to have a more accurate date in our system to run the business on? So let's answer these questions with a little help from Tableau. So are shoes available when they should be? Actual versus plan date. So I used for this a simple vertical bar chart viz um, and, uh, and a calculation to derive early, late, and on time categories. As you can see, it's very eye-opening. In this four million pair data set, 94% were put away before the plan date. Well, gosh, I guess you're probably thinking, I'm surprised. I thought the problem would be that the product was late. No, you know what? The product was early. The product was early most of the time because we had too long a lead time in our system to accommodate for all the variation that we were not monitoring. And 40% were between a week and two weeks early. Can you think about the opportunity you have to make sales, to take back orders, to keep customers happy? If you have the visibility of when product will be here, no wonder there wasn't a lack of trust. Customer service is thinking something's gonna be here two weeks from now and suddenly it's available today. So what kind of behavior does that drive? Well, it drives them not believing the date in the system. It drives them to send emails to the logistics team and to the planning teams and say, do you think this will be here early? Because a lot of times it is. So the conclusion, there's a significant opportunity to improve the plan date accuracy. All right, question number two. Vessel operator reliability, ETA versus ATA. So I found the most effective way to visualize um, this is with a scatter plot. I prefer this methodology because it's easy to interpret, it's clean, and it takes up less space on a dashboard. And it's consistent with traditional statistical process control charts. And it also lends itself to applying a confidence interval. This is key. In my efforts at Brooks to transform the Brooks supply chain, one thing that we needed to address was not setting our parameters to cover the 100% of possible occurrences, but to focus on allowing the natural 95% of occurrences to flow through and manage the 5% of exceptions. You know, for businesses to truly operate efficiently, you need to establish rules that allow for that to happen. So I found the scatter plot was extremely effective at demonstrating the accuracy of vessel, vessel operator ETA. I looked at data from 2015 and also from 2016. So in 2015, at a 95% confidence interval, actual time of arrival was between 3.8 days late and 0.6 days early. And in 2016, it was between 4.1 days late and 0.9 days early. So you know what? It got worse year over year. And the conclusion is, ETA is not reliable, and actual time of arrival is often late. All right, on to the next question. It's kind of like Mythbusters, too. <laughs> you guys were at the keynote. <laughs> uh, so, the last mile. Could we do a better job of managing when we know something's gonna be at the port to the time that it's put away at the distribution center? So for this, again, I use the scatter plot uh, to be the most effective use of, of determining this. And looking at 2015 and 2016, what this basically told me was that at, at a 95% confidence interval in 2015, um, goods are put away within 9.9 .9 days of the vessel arriving at the port. And in 2016, it improved to eight days. So 
I'm thinking about how can I improve the accuracy of the plan date and how can I use an offset to do that. So looking at 9.9 .9 and 8, I decided to just split the difference and use 9 for piloting a solution to determine if we could get a more accurate plan date in our system. So what did we learn? Well, we learned why there is a lack of trust. Are shoes available when they should be? No. Are the vessel carriers reliable? No. And can we manage the last mile to the distribution center? Yeah, at a 95% confidence interval, we can. So how do we fix this? Well, data, right? We gotta utilize better information to manage the plan date. We need to improve ETA accuracy. So if we're not getting the accuracy we need from our vessel operators, how do we get it? Well, in researching this, there's basically two paths you can go down. One is sensor data, and one is IoT predictive analytics. Sensor data is expensive, um, hardware is involved, it's, it takes an upfront investment. IoT predictive analytics, pretty simple. It's algorithms, it's data, it's low cost, it's easy to implement. Um, and through my research, I, proved, I, I found it proven to be more accurate than sensor data, because sensor data is basically using GPS pings and forecasting off of that. And we know what's wrong with forecasts. They're pretty much always wrong. <laughs> so I took, I took the predictive analytics route and thought, well, I'll, I'll pilot this idea. Okay. Managing the plan date. So if we have a better ETA to work off of, we can manage the plan date. Now traditionally, we never managed the plan date. We, set up, we placed a purchase order, we had a plan date, we never updated it unless we heard that the vessel was gonna be late. The vessel was gonna be late, then we moved it out, but as usually within a day of it being here. That's pretty disruptive to your downstream operations. People are expecting something to be here and it's not. So we need to get better at managing it. And we actually have to manage all the plan dates in the system. That's how you're going to build trust. And then we need to manage performance. We need to reinforce the assumptions and tune lead times through ongoing performance management to create visibility and also to share results, share the success, help people, take people along on the journey, help people understand that, yeah, you know what? We're actually improving on our accuracy and you can, you can feel more confident in those dates in the system. So now that I've kind of laid the groundwork for this, now it's time to pilot the IoT solution. So this is a viz that I generated to do that. And it basically, I had two objectives when I created this viz. One was to monitor the pilot benefits um, for the business case to do it. And the second was budget related. I was interested in streamlining my requirements with the IoT provider that had a fancy UI to just the data and build my own UI uh, internally. And so I thought, well, I can get all the information I need from the IoT provider. I can get geotags so I can create a map. I can connect that with the data in my data warehouse, and I can connect the, P the purchase orders through the bill of lading from the, from the vessel carrier information with the PO details. And I can make this a very intuitive platform for our logistics team so they can hover over a vessel and see exactly what models SKUs and quantities and, and whether they're going to be on time or late uh, on that vessel. So that improved our visibility tremendously. Uh, this lower container here was pairs days improved. It's a little bit of a tricky concept to realize, but essentially I determined that the most accurate date to drive the estimated time of arrival was once the vessel cleared Japan. And that's approximately 10 days prior to it arriving at a Northwest port. So I took that date and from that we managed the plan date. And a lot of times what would we would see during the pilot is it would move in. And so this particular container is showing the days improved in advance of our plan dates. So you can see that once we had more accurate information to work off of, we were able to improve our plan dates 
more than we had to push them out. The red showing that we had to push out, the green meaning we got improvement. And then just to make it easier for people to really kind of wrap their heads around it, I did a pie chart uh, in the corner to just show percent days improved. So it's very visual. You could just drop down into the corner here at the five days and go, well, yeah, we saw a 50% improvement uh, on, we saw 50% of the POs had a five or more day improvement. And so we used 547,000 pairs in the data set when we ran the pilot over a two month period of time. As I just mentioned, the 50% pairs realized a more than a five day improvement. We enhanced the visual ability to identify styles by POs and vessel. And we are also improving the ability to detect vessels that were arriving later than the original plan date to action on. So the vessel would appear red in the map and that would instantly draw attention to the logistics manager that we may have a problem here and we should probably evaluate what the impact is gonna to be to the plan date. In fact, the data was, was so useful during this that we couldn't help but start using it in the live environment. It was too compelling. So we got a month into the pilot and we actually started going live with it during the pilot phase. So just to speak to how fast we started implementing, which paved the road for making the business case to um, move forward with it. So conclusion, yeah, there was significant opportunity to improve the plan date and improve visibility. But did it solve our fundamental problem? Was our, date, was our plan date more accurate, right? So, there's one thing about improving the plan date or having better information on ETA, but did the whole solution, the whole solution actually demonstrate an improvement in accuracy? And so here's the highlights. The table on the left is your carrier accuracy. And so this is what was in our live environment in parallel with what I was doing with the pilot. And what we found was that you know, POs were put away at a 95% confidence interval within 11.6 days early of plan date. So things were still getting put away early, not two weeks early, but we could expect them to be put away as much as 11.6 days early. And then with the IoT, we could expect that they'd be put away within seven and a half days early of the plan date. But we improved the put away accuracy by four days, just in the pilot with just using some basic assumptions, not really tuning, not doing any more legwork, but just re realizing that there was a real opportunity here and we could just put some really kind of straw man assumptions together and start working from that um, at a relatively low cost. And so obviously you can see from the, si from the, the IoT solution table that the the scatter plot is much tighter um, and the days improved um, or the, the accuracy level was raised. So what did we learn? IoT is more accurate and the solution will build trust. Okay, so now we're on to the fun stuff. What happened next? <laughs> Rainbows and unicorns, of course. <laughs> I was happy and a few people were pat on the back and you know, we all got taken out for coffee. But seriously, um, the budget was approved to move forward and put this in production. We were easily able to go from the pilot into the, into the production live environment. In fact, we did it during the pilot. Um, we began measuring performance and monitoring performance on a monthly basis and we began to look at things differently. Opportunities that didn't seem possible before suddenly became available and minds opened up. So now I wanna walk you through the viz that I generated for managing the IoT performance. And this viz is made up of essentially five elements but, but it helps us to understand how we're doing in terms of our assumptions and also the, the performance that we're getting out of using this IoT solution. You'll notice uh, kind of a new addition here. We've got uh, China and Vietnam uh, transit lanes in terms of plan date improvement because those transit lanes perform very differently. When we did the pilot, we just did China. So, but then where you see where plan date accuracy is concerned, 
um, we can combine them because we're using the assumption that based on the ETA, we're gonna use an offset to manage the plan date. This is the ATA to put away. How long is it actually taking from the time we goods arrive at the port to the time that they're put away? So we can manage the offset. And then lastly, you know what? We're really focused on lead time now. So we wanna look at lead time performance and we're setting new targets. In fact, we lowered lead times as a result of the analysis that was done during the pilot. We took 14% of the lead time out of China and 7% of the lead time out of Vietnam. So I basically set this uh, performance chart, set the scatter plot performance chart on the bottom, and you'll see that there's a green line running across it, which is the target, and the range of occurrences that we're seeing. Now we had really good performance from the time that we went live all the way till January. We were actually hitting that 95% lead time adherence that we were shooting for, and we actually saw improvements in the accuracy of our plan dates over that time period. But then, in February, things started to get a little wacky. And in March, they continued to be off. Does anyone here have any idea why that might have happened? Chinese New Year, yep, very good. Yeah, so Chinese New Year came along, which kind of started getting us thinking again a little bit more. Hey, you know what? Maybe we can't have the same transit lead time all year round. Maybe we have to have some seasonal transit lead times that we use during certain times of the year where we know things are gonna be a little bit more unpredictable, where we're gonna have more congestion, more challenges. So then, can anyone guess why it continued to be bad from April to May and started getting better in June? So this is the cool thing about looking at your data and, and managing the performance and talking about it and trying to figure out why is this happening. And what we found was happening during this time period was that the uh, vessel operators were reforming their alliances. So NYK and OCL and uh, Panalpina were now splitting up and they were joining forces, someone else, Panalpina was joining forces with Evergreen. And there was mass confusion in the, in the carrier space during that time frame, which led to a lot of uh, delayed handoffs at ports, at port, at added port congestion, and it lengthened transit lead times overall that, that occurred all the way up until those alliances were formed on the 1st of May. And so we continue to see an effect from that way into June and even early July because we're booking our shipments about two weeks in advance. So it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. So we, you know, our lead time adherence isn't glorious, you know, I, you know, I gotta call a spade a spade. You know, we, we, out of Vietnam, we've experienced 32% late and out of uh, uh, China, 20%. But the reality is, is that those plan dates are still being managed and the accuracy to the downstream operations is still very visible and it's less disruptive than it was. And we're working on trying to figure out how can we improve those pieces. And so, you know, we needed to take it to another level to really tighten our transit lead times and drive even more accuracy. Which takes me to the next viz. <laughs> One viz leads to another viz leads to another viz. Uh, how many people have been there? Um, and this is fun because this comes out of the dialogue you have working with the logistics teams, working with the supply planning teams, is what do we need to do to get a better handle and better control this area of our supply chain? And what we felt we needed to do is create a dashboard that allowed, a, allowed for us to evaluate overall transit lane performance, which would be this top level container. I've got China on one half, I've got Vietnam on the other half. So overall, how are we performing? We can do it by month, we can do it by multiple months, et cetera. Then, how are the segments performing? The transit segment isn't just made up of a sale date. The transit segment is made up of leaving the factory to the time of departure, and sometimes you don't catch that first week's vessel, which is actually a big problem. Then there's the sale time, which is the ETD, ATA, and then you've got the, from, the, from the port to the put away, and then you've got the total transit performance. And so now we're looking at these segments individually to understand better using box plots, 
what the variability is within each of these segments. So we can understand where we need to target our action plans against that. I also use green and red and blue as call outs for on time, early and late. Um, and that's consistent throughout the dashboard. And also establish parameters on the side here that allow us to update the targets. Um, so for having dialogue about like reducing the lead time, we can look back over historical information and see how that would have affected our on-time performance over the last six months if we had taken it down to 32 or, or uh, you know, 25, et cetera. So that's been really handy. So now this is sort of the interactive tool. I've kind of washed my hands of it, hand it off to the logistics team, put it on Tableau server, and they can look at it, they can use it in their business reviews with their carriers, they can use it with the COO, they can take it to their SNOP meetings. But now they have the data to support the things that they've always been saying, the, 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 the reasons why they've been having issues with on-time delivery or why lead times have been taking longer. And, and they can actually target and set up action plans to improve it. The last layer on here is basically <clears throat> vessel performance. So we have service level agreements with our carriers, and we set the target service level for our preferred carrier, and we look at which vessels um, uh, came in over that stated service level. So you can see out of Vietnam over here how when we miss that 17-day vessel, we miss badly. <laughs> we end up on a vessel that takes 26, 27, 30 days. Um, and, and so it's really important for us to catch that 17-day vessel. But it also helps us kind of calibrate around, hey, you know what, if we reduce our transit lead time in our system out of Vietnam by two days or three days, we're still gonna have the same level of performance. It's, we, can't, we can't help those times when it's gone 26, 27, 30 days. That's, that's a major adjustment. We'd have to inflate our lead times again if we wanna cover those. So it's just about kind of wrapping your head around what can we control, what can we not control, and what do we have to live with as a business, okay? So it's been a quite, a, quite an evolution. Um, I'm in the process right now of building out dashboards exactly like this for different modes. So obviously you can see this is for North America. I've got the flag in the corner. I've got the vessel in the corner. So you know it's North America Ocean. We'll have a North America Air. We'll have a, 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 an EMEA. Ocean, EMEA Air, you know, so it's very intuitive. You look at the dashboard, you know exactly, you don't really need to read the header, you see the map, or you see the flag, you see the, um, the vessel or the plane, you know what you're looking at. So just kind of trying to make it a little bit more touchy-feely for people um, and, and intuitive as well. So I promised you business benefits, so I'm gonna deliver. Um, it really has been a win-win uh, uh, journey. The cost of the solution, because I was able to create those dashboard views in Tableau, I was able to streamline re my requirements with the IoT provider to just a simple CSV file that they send me daily. Um, that allowed me to get, get it at 20% of the subscription rate, which made launching this initiative extremely easy from a budget standpoint. Ease of implementation, there is no integration necessary. Um, it was largely driven by Tableau, and then our logistics team is manually managing the plan dates. Now we have created some, some AI, uh, APIs to make that easier for them and automated that process, and eventually we'll get to a point where they can um, do that uh, uh, more, more, uh, less, less manually and have it be more of an uh, automated approach. Lead time reduction. So as I stated, we uh, immediately reduced lead times out of China by 14%, we, that's five days. And out of Vietnam, it was 7%, which was, which was two days initially. We now have our transit lead times out of Vietnam down to 35 days, and China is still at 30, but we have what we call a fast pass option, which is 26 days. And so we have, we have developed another mechanism for moving product faster through this process. Engagement. Now that we've got the visuals and we're putting it out on Tableau server, we have a whole new level of engagement all the way from the C-suite down to the people that are doing the work. And people have facts to make decisions with. 
and it makes it a lot more, uh, a lot simpler to explain why we think we should reduce or inflate lead times based on the data. And innovation and operations. Our COO loves the fact that he can demonstrate to the rest of the organization that innovation isn't limited to product, but that supply chain can be a source of innovation for the company that's driving real results. So what's the next level? Well, for me, the next level with Transvoyant, our IoT provider, is to really get a direct connection with their data, to stop getting CSV files from them, and be able to connect with the data directly so I can drive real-time dashboards, both on desktop and mobile, um, and, and ultimately blend that data with our data warehouse to create even more, intu more intuitive, more functional dashboards that can be widely used throughout the organization. So I got to close with Christmas. <laughs> I started it. I got to finish it. Uh, so December 25th is not just the day on the calendar that might be Christmas. It is the day on the calendar that you can count on to celebrate Christmas with your family and friends. And so it should be for the Brooks Supply Chain family and friends. With a little help from Tableau, Brooks is transforming its supply chain to make every date on the calendar as reliable as December 25th. Thank you. So I allowed some time for Q&A. If anybody's got any questions, um, I'm free to talk. Yes? So, so at Brooks, I'll say that we're very agile. Um, in fact, we could even be considered scrappy. Um, and so we feel like um, you know, good shouldn't be the enemy of, or perfect shouldn't be the enemy of good, right? So if we've got an idea, we'll figure out a low-cost way to, 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 to try and pilot that idea and determine whether it's good or bad, throw it away, move on, et cetera. My role in the organization is, is, is kind of like an internal consultant. I work across all the supply chain functions, but my roadmap is extremely linear. From the, DC, from the time the goods are put away to the DC all the way back to raw materials. So I'm putting all my energy right now into the in-transit segment, and so then I partner with the logistics and supply planning teams to, to understand what the problem is, um, and then work with them on, you know, uh, you know, collaborating with them on the solution and getting buy-in from them. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a delivery model. I figure out what the opportunity is, I pilot it, I determine a solution, and then I leave it in the hands of that domain. So that's this logistics tool after that. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I really want to get to that performance management pyramid um, to help, you know, uh, support all the activities that are happening towards an end goal. Um, we Currently, we're operating sort of like a high-level global operations KPI dashboard, uh, get collective input from different parts of the organization. Um, but it's very, the progress is incremental, like to your 
question. I mean, yes, we're trying to implement best practices all along the way, but they also have to fit with our business, right? Certain culture, certain, certain types of practices don't work great for certain industries. And we're a high service level industry, so some things might be some, you know, contrary to, you know, what you might be wanting to get at from a, say, a finance perspective or something like that. No, we looked at what was most practical, like from uh, managing our business and what was important to us, and kind of distilled that down with like C-suite and senior directors of each of the areas. And, and even within their areas, they'll have more granular dashboards, but you know, at a high level, if we want to understand how the whole global operations team is, uh, is performing or all, of, all the segments, we've got the one dashboard that we can use for that. Yeah, yep. Yep. Hi. Um, well, first of all, great presentation. It's very uh, relatable to see the kind of variability and, and kind of trust in carrier data being a problem. Um, so I was wondering, um, as to your IoT supplier, what, what exactly do they provide to you? Is it just the ge geotags of the vessels, or is it also a prediction of when they're going to arrive? It's the prediction. Yeah, so they combine the, their, their data. So. So they're basically a consumer of terabytes of data. They cut their teeth on the defense uh, side of the world, and so they've got contracts with National Security Defense. Um, that's where they built their, their Intel network. Um, then they saw that the, there's a great application for supply chain for that, and then they're focused specifically on this blind spot of the supply chain and applying their uh, predictive analytics to that. Transvoyant. Yeah. Hi. Uh, great presentation uh, again. Very Thanks. informative. Very helpful. I'm really interested in the the sort of slide where you talked about um, once you had implemented the pilot, you noticed you began to notice some issues with uh, Chinese New Year and different uh, alliances with the carriers. Yeah. Have you had you had those experiences before, and how did your improved sort of targeting? Fix that. I guess my initial my initial concern is if you're focused on shrinking the, the difference between when it gets there and when it's supposed to get there, did that produce more late time or more late arrivals? Yeah. So I, it's important to kind of break it into two pieces. One is like let's manage and have accurate plan dates, and the other one is how can we improve lead time performance? How can we get faster? So. Even though we see that we're, um, some of our efforts to get faster didn't play out during that period of time when the carrier alliances were reforming, um, it, it opened our eyes to the, you know, that, that, that variability, that those, those factors could play a role. Um, and so it's more for looking forward. How do we prepare for it? So we're putting together a more comprehensive plan for managing Chinese New Year for this coming year based on the learnings from that. So, you know, really good information. So my thought was, you're reducing, you know, your, your times, you know, in magnitudes of from 30 days to 25 days. So with Brooks being more like, uh, I assume, higher margin, you know, shoe, yep. um, could there be an opportunity to, um, you know, have a small, because um, I, know, I know China and I know Asia is, you know, by far the best cost center for producing shoes, but yep. um, you, could, you could get it to under a week, right, if you could produce in Mexico. Local or, for local. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so what, could you, has Brooks do any production in North America or kind of, or Latin yeah. America to, to reduce that lead time, just kind of yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, so um, I'll expose myself a little bit here. <laughs> uh, Brooks, we are a thought leader, but we don't have the capital resources to establish uh, local for local manufacturing, say, in, in North America right now, but we're paying attention to it very closely. So you could call us a fast follower <laughs> um, in our industry, um, but we're definitely keeping an eye on what Adidas and Nike are doing in uh, Mexico and also in North America um, for taking cues, and, and we're doing a lot of research and work on 3D 
printing of footwear as well. Um, and, and of course, that's, it's, it's an arm of our future of shoemaking <laughs> uh, strategy is how can we, you know, so we look at, um, you look at a lot of things, you look at automation to reduce the impacts of, of labor cost increases. Um, you also look at it in terms of efficiencies. Um, the reality though is that like some of the shoes are getting, um, they, although they look simpler, the woven and knit uppers that you see these days, the lead times for the materials are longer <laughs> than our traditional, uh, what we call sandwich meshes or um, the, typical, the typical shoemaking mesh material. Um, so it, it's challenging. We're kind of, you know, as technology evolves, we're increasing our production lead times at the same time trying to figure out how can we shorten them. And, uh, and so it's always a complex challenge and there's always room for improvement. First of all, thanks a lot for the presentation. It's very interesting because I'm also building something similar. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, so I do have a question for you first. Are you using Carrier Direct or MVOCCs? Uh, carrier Direct. Okay, so because I know like if you're using MVOCC, sometimes they budget something in the lead time because that's going to be the KPI performance. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, so if one day your service provider is open to use Tableau, do this type of dashboard, will you be open to integrate your data with the shipping data and co-develop some dashboard solutions? Oh, to share, to yeah, I, I would be, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, you know, we, security is a little bit of a tough battle at Brooks, IT okay. security. Um, and so, you know, you have to be really careful what level of information you're sharing. Um, and so, it kind of have to dumb it down a, a bit, and I think you might lose some of the value in it, but I think if we can keep the carriers um, aware that we're monitoring the performance and we're not just absorbing the delays um, and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, okay with it, then I think that they're gonna continue to raise the bar. So I'm hoping. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, I'm from a third party logistics, DB Shanker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are we also. Use, we use DB. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. think, like, uh, if you guys are using Tableau, we are using Tableau, we are trying to build the same set of dashboard. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should work together because yeah. we have more views. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think this is a trend. It's like our company, you know, logistics is typically behind technology. So yep. we are also trying to do something more innovative. Yeah, that's Thank great. You. Yeah. yeah, we really want to learn from you too because you have the whole supply chain view besides the shipping. Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, again, thanks. Uh, along with what everybody else said, thanks for uh, your presentation. Today. What I'd like to ask you is about the uh, executive buy-in yep. of the dashboards. I work for. Uh, a sportswear company down in Portland. A little that's, one. That's not that's Nike, not Nike or Adidas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but our executives are good and while good intentioned, are not really up on technology. They do a lot of Excel, a lot of prints. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of printing and from all of our copiers. So basically, can you go through the process how you got executive buy-in for all of these visual tools that you went over today? Yeah. So my boss is the COO. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps a lot. So we do a lot of uh, supply chain strategy discussions um, with, with the, all the leaders of the global operation teams, right? So he's overseeing all the operational teams. And so, um, so we make sure that all of the efforts that we're doing are aligned across the organization. So I get dovetailed in on almost every activity that's happening within that, those groups. So that's what really helps. Plus, he comes from a background that isn't footwear. Um, he was at Limited Brands, he was at FTD, and he has a Boston Consulting Group background. So he is data-driven, so he is absolutely on board with leading with data and not leading with assumptions. And I think, you know, like what um, Adam was saying earlier in the keynote, right? Without data, without tr the da data truth, it, it, it opens up a vacuum for assumptions and myths. And that's a, that's a battle that I think every operations 
you know, manager or, you know, on boots on the ground person in a, in a business has to deal with. If, and if you can start developing more of a competency around sharing the performance of every area, then it becomes kind of a mute point and people are more focused on solving the problem versus pointing fingers. And that's kind of the direction we're trying to take things at, at Brooks. So it starts slowly though. Like we have an global operations dashboard. We don't have targets and nobody's accountable yet. But targets are coming, accountabilities are coming. So you gotta get people used to watching the data and using the data. And then you gotta make it actionable, I think. So. Hello. Right here. Hi. Yeah, there. <laughs> um, I have a question on where your data is stored. So it sounds like you already had um, pretty good data to begin with because it sounds like the CEO is behind data to begin with. Yeah. Um, for the data that goes into your Tableau reports, do you have like a repository for all this data or is it live data into yeah. your ERP system or your uh, transportation management system? How is that handled? Yeah, so I mean our primary data source is our data warehouse. Um, that's just largely transactional data out of our ERP system. Um, and we can join that with other data, but we're actually really, like, my, from my perspective of the things that I'm doing, I'm working to create um, stand, you know, uh, databases that kind of stand up next to our data warehouse so that I can start making that more, more of a connection. Right now it's very desktop driven. Uh, a lot of the things that I do with Tableau are, are based off of CSV files or um, Excel files. And uh, because I'm generally working with data that's not part of our ERP system, that's where I, so, so I build, so like ultimately my goal is to build the supply chain watchtower and uh, using Tableau as the top layer to that. And so incrementally I'm bringing things in, quality data, transportation data, et cetera, that didn't currently exist under our umbrella so that it can be utilized with the broader organization. So it's a build out process. Any other questions? So you probably said, but um, the consumption of your information, is that through server? Is that how the people are looking at the yes. information? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it.